lover will come my way The girl to hold in my arms And know the magic of her charms Cause I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover So I don't have to dream alone Where that, shoot that ball Red Arbuck is the former coach of the Boston Celtics. He was born on September 20th, 1917 in Brooklyn, New York. He was responsible for nine of the Celtics championships. He won one championship in 1957. From 1958 on, he won eight straight as a coach. For his NBA career, he was 938 and 479. Prior to coaching in the NBA, he coached in the BAA, Basketball Association of Americas. In 1971, Red was named the Silver Anniversary Coach, signifying the league's honor as best coach of his first quarter century. Red was elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame as a coach in 1968. Lastly, Red tragically died of a heart attack on October 28, 2006. Red leaves a great legacy with Boston, the Celtics, and the world for being such a great leader. So Red Auerbach was kind of essential in the 50s and 60s. He started the dynasty the Celtics, and they actually won 16 championships underneath his rules. So Red Auerbach is one of the most successful coaches in NBA history. He led the Celtics to nine NBA championships. He had one of the most successful records in his coaching career. He was an activist, obviously, um, in his way of integration. He only used seven set plays, so it's shown by his pure coaching skill that those seven set plays led them to 16 championships. Um, and in sports, obviously, his history uh, reflects itself. He, was, he had the most victories of 938 in NBA history. He had the dynasty in the 50s and 60s, and he was successful overall. So I would say a little bit. Of Red Arbuck was the first to draft a black player, Chuck Cooper. He knew that he had to take risks to make the team successful. Red Arbuck even had some personal training sessions with Bill Russell and told him to prepare for some races. Red Arbuck had a different coaching style than other coaches in his time. Red Arbuck had very intense practices. He was the first to use a sixth man in basketball. A sixth man is a bench player that comes off the bench more than other bench players. Red Arbuck didn't have one leading scorer. He coached so that everyone could help the team succeed. He coached so that they could play as a team, not just a couple of star players. So Red Arbuck didn't really care about individual players. In the 50s and 60s, it was very much an individualistic sport. Um, he kind of integrated people for their skill and not just for their individual hype. So uh, Red Auerbach drafted Bill Russell. It was very uncommon for African Americans to be in the NBA at that time. He actually drafted the first uh, African American NBA star. So uh, Bill Russell being as good as he was and Red Auerbach being as fair as he was with drafting players kind of put him on the map to show off his skills and be the true player that he really was. Do you think... Oh, the shark, baby. The NBA wouldn't be what it is today without him, said David Stern, a former NBA commissioner. Red Arbuck established many things used in the current NBA. He was the first to have a six man. The six man is also used by every single team in the NBA now. He made the fast break. The fast break he used a lot in the NBA, and it's all because of Red Arbuck. Well, it's teeth, Scarlet billows. Red Arbuck drafted the first black player, Chuck Cooper, breaking the color barrier so that other races can play basketball. His coaching style has been adopted by present day coaches since we see more teamwork used now than in his time. Many teams do his torture drills to play fast pace so they can do fast break and play mind games with the other team just like Red Arbuck. He had the first African American starting five and hired the first African American coach. Red Arbuck is also known for lighting a cigar when the victory is secured. Brad Arbuck didn't care about stats as much as the player's attitude. Stats are the most overrated thing in sports as far as I'm concerned, Brad Arbuck wrote in his book called Management by Arbuck. He says the stats can't record everything. He didn't think about if he can have the next star player, he thought about who can help the Celtics. He 
He coached his players by encouraging them and said if they give him their all, Robert will give it his all. He defends his players if he thinks the referee made a bad call. Robert made his team stand up during timeouts. He considered everything, not just points. He gives the team pep talks and motivates them to play like a team. They're very fresh, they're playing tenacious defense. The Lakers are standing around more and seem to be a little more tired than the Celtics. was the Celtics general manager from 1966 to 1984. As a general manager, he won six titles. Lastly, Red retired as a GM to become a team president in 1984. In 1986, Red won the Celtics 16 championship, which would be his last. He died as the team's president in 2006. As a general manager, Red learned the league's rules and loopholes and used them to draft Larry Bird. When Bird was a junior at Indiana State, he was drafted by the Celtics. The rule was that you had to spend four years in college. Bird was eligible because he spent one year in college and never played a game, which is why they scratched that year. So technically, since Red knew the rules, he could draft Larry Bird. He would just have to wait one year until he graduated. This shows Red used his knowledge of the game to make the Celtics a better franchise. So his differences did affect his success. Uh, like I said, he won 60, they won 16 championships underneath his coaching style. So he, um, by, by valuing their individual skills and not just the individual themselves, he was able to win a lot of games that way.